Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm going to talk you through how to select the best actives for your next development. Now the first thing you need to remember is it's a very crowded marketplace. So even if you have the best product in the world, if you don't have a strong enough marketing story, no one's going to know about it. So you need to have a strong but compliant marketing story with a unique point of difference that helps you stand out from your competitors. The second thing you need to remember is consumers want instant results. Now, sometimes this isn't possible, but they want fast results. So they're not going to try your product and wait for one or two months to get the results they're looking for. It really helps if you make sure that your product has a fantastic sensory experience, as well as some sort of instant visible or beneficial effect that keeps them using it long enough to get the long-term results that a lot of cosmeceutical actives can produce when used consistently for the right amount of time. But give them an instant effect while they're waiting for that long-term effect to get true brand loyalty. The third thing you need to remember is you need to stay within the correct cosmetics definition with all of your marketing claims. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to translate some fantastic in vitro claims to suitable in vivo claims with the right evidence to make suitable marketing claims. Remember the cosmetics definition is to alter the appearance of the skin. And while we know that a lot of cosmeceutical actives will act deep within the skin or the cells to bring about their beneficial appearance effects, we can't say that in the marketing. And finally, you need to get the active to where it needs to be for the best results. Now, some actives have their effect by being on the surface of the skin, while many actives need to penetrate into the deeper layers of the epidermis to bring about their beneficial effects. And no matter what active you use and no matter where it needs to get to, if you don't have it in a compatible base product, you'll be inactivating or causing rapid degradation of the active and it won't work regardless of what you do. So when we're formulating products, you need to look at the compatibilities of the active materials and where you need them to go to get the best effects. You certainly don't want to be spending money on a good cosmeceutical ingredient that you don't formulate to suit the conditions of the base product, for example, the wrong pH or the wrong temperatures of processing, or in a base product that won't penetrate the skin to where the active needs to go. Now, to show you how all of this comes together, today I'm going to be using an active from CLR called MPC, Milk Peptide Complex. Now, I'm picking this particular material because it has fantastic in vitro data. It has excellent in vivo data. Remember, the in vivo data is where you get a lot of your marketing claims. And I will be showing you how I make selections based on in vitro data, and then how I can uh, prepare suitable cosmetic claims from in vivo data. But this particular material also has very specific manufacturing requirements and compatibilities to make sure it's compatible and stable in the end product. The other thing I love about this product in particular is you start to see results within 10 to 14 days, and that's very fast for any sort of cosmeceutical ingredient. So now, Let's look at the in vitro data for this particular material. First of all, you can see that there is significant stimulation of collagen type 1 synthesis. This is provided by the supplier in their data sheet. Remember, you can't make this claim on a finished product because it's the physiological process within the cells, and that's not permitted in marketing of cosmetics. You can also see significant stimulation of hyaluronic acid synthesis. It boosts the hyaluronic acid synthesis of fibroblasts by up to almost 1800% related to control. Now as a chemist, when I'm comparing the hundreds of cosmeceutical ingredients out there, this is fantastic information for me to compare different cosmeceuticals and see which ones I may want to use in my product for a certain brief and certain results. So straight away, I know that this is going to have a very pronounced effect on collagen and hyaluronic acid synthesis, which will translate to dramatic visible effects. 
but I can't use this information in my marketing. So I'm going to look now at their in vivo test results. Here you can see in vivo results. Now these tests were conducted on 20 volunteers. And in this first graph, you can see a reduction in the wrinkle depth of crow's feet around the eyes. After just 14 days, you can see a reduction of over 30% in wrinkle depth. This would translate to a really powerful marketing claim such as contains MPC, which has been clinically proven to reduce the depth of wrinkles around the eyes by over 30% in just 14 days. Now that's a claim your consumer's looking for. In this next graph, we can also see improvement of skin firmness we can see that a gel containing this material resulted in highly significantly firmer skin after just 10 days. Again, from this information, we could make a claim such as contains MPC, which has been clinically proven to firm the skin by over 30% within just 10 days. A couple of things about claims, you'll notice I've been very specific about the time frame and the amount, and I've made sure that the improvement correlates very strongly with the in vivo results provided by the supplier. And because these results have been provided by the supplier, I have named their material. Now the inky name may be slightly different on a label, and you would normally need to seek permission from your supplier to use the efficacy data. But where you name their material specifically and use the results to make very specific and correct claims as I have done, they'll normally allow you to use their test results. You can, of course, conduct your own testing, but why bother when it's already been done for you? You should make market evaluations to ensure that your finished product yields the same results. But if you're using the material in a compatible base and you've been processing it in the correct way, you should get the same results as your supplier. By reviewing the supplier's information, you can see they very clearly tell us how to process this material for best effects. It's designed for leave-on formulations at a concentration of 0.5% at a pH of 6 to 7. They go on to describe how we should disperse the material in buffered water to help ensure the pH of the product stays within that range over the full shelf life of the product. And it also tells us not to exceed 40 degrees during processing. When you're dealing with a supplier, look for a supplier that can provide you with all of this information. I've used this active from CLR because they're a very reputable supplier. And as you can see, they provided me with all of the information I need, not just in vitro data so I can compare actives at a cosmetic chemist level, but also in vivo data so I can give the marketing department some strong marketing claims for the product to take it to market. They also provided example formulas and input usage rates so that I know exactly how much of their material to use to get the same results. And I also know a lot about how to create a compatible base to get the best efficacy out of this material. So now let's look at some product concepts using this material and how to make sure we formulate it in a compatible base to get the best results. Our first product concept is a selfie ready moisturizer. So as we saw from the efficacy data, we are going to get very strong anti-wrinkle results after 14 days. We're also going to get very significant skin firmness after 10 days. But what about those instant effects that a consumer wants straight away from their product? We're going to give that to them by using a soft focus material so that when they apply the product, they're instantly going to see results. Now, of course, those results are going to wash away uh, because we're using some soft focus powders. But the long-term benefits will start to appear after 10 to 14 days. If we can make our consumer happy with the results from very first use, they'll use it long enough. And we only need them to use it 10 to 14 days to get the longer term benefits as well. And then they'll become brand loyal. So this first product has soft focus powders added and I'm going to show you how to create that compatible base. The other thing I've done with this product is I've used all natural and green recognized materials. So we're also adding in that story as well. 
Here is our first product concept. So this is our selfie ready moisturizer. And we've got some soft focus powders in here. Made it lovely and light, very green formula. You can, of course, get a lot of silicon coated particles that will give you a really instant selfie effect. I'm using a natural formula today because I want to show you it can be done naturally. And of course, there it is the formulation challenge. So as you can see, it has an instant effect on the skin and that helps get that brand loyalty from your consumer while your actives take effect. So we're gonna prepare our water phase first. Now remember, we need to create a buffer solution. And I'm just going to start heating the oil phase materials while I'm doing this. So we're gonna first add the sodium citrate. Now we're doing this because this is again the way the supplier has told us we should process this material to create our buffer solution. We need to stir that until it's dissolved, which is dissolved very quickly. Then I'm going to prepare uh, my natural gum. And of course, I'm using the slurry method. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll have seen me do this numerous times. So I'm putting the natural gum into propane dial, humectant. Now what I'm doing with this formula is I'm also using the osmolite, which is my humectant. I'm using an emulsion, and this is going to help carry my active to where it needs to be for best results. And of course, the soft focus powders are what's giving me the instant effect to please my consumer. Now I'm using some really light skin fuel esters, green esters in this formula, to give a really pleasant skin feel and fast absorption. Just because I'm creating a green formula, I don't have to use vegetable oils. I'm choosing to use uh, esters, green esters, to get a beautifully light skin feel and fast absorption. So now I've added my gums. I'm just letting that heat while also heating my oil phase. Now I've talked a lot about compatibility and I am gonna be using a volatile natural ester in this product. So I haven't included it in my oil phase to be heated. I will be adding that separately when this product is cooled below 40 degrees. No point adding a volatile ingredient above 40 degrees or above its um, volatility point, otherwise it will just evaporate out of the formula and then it may as well not be added at all. Now, when my product's cooled below 40 degrees, I can add my volatile with it. And again, I'm using a natural ester that is volatile. And the reason I'm using this is so that the product has a really light skin feel. But I couldn't add this in the hot phase, otherwise it just would have evaporated out of the formula. I can now also add my soft focus material. Now again, there's so many soft focus materials out there. I'm using this one because it suits the green philosophy. And you may have wondered up to this point, why have I been using a propeller stirrer for an emulsion instead of a homogenizing head? Well, it's because I had every intention of adding this soft focus pigment at the end. And of course, if I use high shear on my soft focus pigment, I'll break the platelets and I won't get the light refractive properties. So I need to use my propeller stirrer so that I don't break the platelets. Now I can add my preservative, essential oil and antioxidant. check and adjust that all-important pH and then add my active. This is the active here but I need to make sure it's a compatible environment before I add it.
and there we have our selfie ready moisturizer. Now don't worry that it hasn't achieved its full viscosity today because we have used uh, sclerotium gum which takes overnight to hydrate fully and we've also used an emulsifying wax which will also take overnight to fully thicken up. So the viscosity tomorrow will be exactly like the sample I showed you earlier and this is our beautiful product today full of high end efficacy, instant results with a beautiful light skin feel and fast absorption. The next product concept I'm going to show you is an instant eye gel. Now, a couple of reasons why I've chosen to show you this formula. The first is it contains a material that gives that instant firming effect on the skin. Remember, our key active here will give long-lasting results from 10 to 14 days. So we're going to create an eye gel here that we could put into a rollable type dispenser. It's going to feel really nice and light to apply, but I have got an instant firming material in this so the skin will feel instantly tight while our active works over 10 to 14 days to produce better long-term effects. Well, here I have already prepared the water and glycerin. And again, remember the active needs that buffer solution. So I have here my sodium citrate. And now my active, the, this is the instant firming active. So I'm going to add that one now. Now I'm going to add my gelling agent and in this case because we're going to be adjusting pH and we need to suit this buffer solution and also the instant firming active, I'm using a product called Sepimax Zen. This is incredibly electrolyte tolerant um, but you won't see it fully disperse and thicken on the day you add it. So we're going to add it. Now we can add the preservative and fragrance. I'll then check and adjust the pH. Now this won't fully swirl today and you may be able to see it, it is looking a little clumpy still. That's perfectly normal with this material, this particular polymer. It usually needs overnight to hydrate, but I can leave it overnight because I've got the preservative in it. Now, because I need a very specific pH for my active ingredient, I'm going to check and adjust that pH to be where I need it to be. And then tomorrow, I would simply stir the product again, add the active and I, until it's homogenous, and then I would have my finished product. So that's how you pick the best actives for your products. So remember, you want to create a product that has a unique selling point. You need to stand out in the crowded marketplace, so pick your actives well. You need to make sure it has instant effects. So of course, cosmeceuticals will generally take, you know, one or two months to perform. The one we use today only takes 10 to 14 days, but a lot of cosmeceuticals will take 30 to 60 days to get the best results. You need to keep your consumer hooked while you're waiting for those longer term results to develop. And even though the active I've used today works within 10 to 14 days, you can see I've added some instant effect materials from different perspectives to the product concepts to give my consumer some instant gratification. I've also been careful about marketing claims. I've been using in vivo efficacy data to create my marketing claims. They're still very strong marketing claims and that's also helped me select which actives I wanted to use for my products. And finally, I've paid really close attention to the processing considerations to ensure a compatible base for my active and also make sure I've used suitable delivery agents to get it to where it needs to go. These are the formulating principles you need to use when selecting the best actives for your next developments. Happy formulating!